Bitcoin crashes after yet another Chinese crackdown. How much power does China have over crypto? Welcome to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. This episode is sponsored by PC Doctor Toolbox. Protect your PC from software crashes, hardware failures, and the kind of glitches that make your life miserable. Speaking of crashes, Bitcoin. After hitting a mid-April high of $65,000, the price of Bitcoin tumbled below $30,000. And China is to blame. You see, the Chinese Communist Party doesn't like Bitcoin. For one, the party can't control it, and for two, the Chinese regime is spending big to create its own digital currency, which it would control. Ironically though, China is where most of the Bitcoin mining happens, particularly here in Sichuan province. Basically, enormous computer banks are used to verify Bitcoin transactions, and you get rewarded with new Bitcoins. It's an energy-intensive process. Thanks to China's massive reliance on coal, China has the energy to fuel it. Until this week, when Chinese authorities ordered 90% of China's Bitcoin mining operations to shut down. Local electric companies in Sichuan were ordered to immediately stop supplying power to crypto mining projects. And local authorities were banned from approving new mining projects. But that's not all. The Chinese regime isn't just going after Bitcoin miners. They're also going after people who use it and they're getting major Chinese banks to help. I'll explain more after the break. Welcome back. And just a reminder, if you like China Uncensored, we do accept Bitcoin. Visit ChinaUncensored.tv support to find out how you can help us fight YouTube demonetization with Bitcoin. So 90% of China's Bitcoin mining has been shut down. There's actually a big silver lining to that, which I'll get to in a moment. But the Chinese Communist Party is also getting major Chinese state-run banks and so-called private Chinese companies involved in the latest crackdown. The People's Bank of China summoned these groups and told them to strictly implement recent notices and guidelines from authorities on curbing risks tied to Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. And in China, the main risk tied to Bitcoin is using it. Financial firms were told to identify customers using or trading crypto and cut off their ability to send or receive money. Five major Chinese banks wanted to show how much they agree with the party's new crypto directives. So they took the initiative. They said they're going to prohibit the use of their accounts for virtual currency transactions. They pledged to promptly put a stop to such transactions, close bank accounts, and report signs of such activities to the authorities. They also called on members of the public to report virtual currency related transactions to the banks. Yes, your neighbors can turn you in for using Bitcoin. Modern problems require modern cultural revolutions. And recently, Chinese police arrested over a thousand people for alleged money laundering with crypto. Obviously, if the Chinese Communist Party says these people were committing crimes, it must be true. And as I mentioned, so-called private Chinese companies are joining the crackdown too. Like China's version of PayPal, Alipay. That is, of course, owned by Jack Ma, one of China's richest men, who disappeared for three months after criticizing Chinese regulators. Don't worry, he wasn't dead. He reappeared after a major crackdown on his tech empire. And now he's just lying low, focusing on hobbies. His hobbies include reading, painting, and staying out of prison by doing whatever the Communist Party wants, like cracking down on crypto. Alipay said it will monitor and investigate accounts for using crypto and block or remove those users. That's huge, since Alipay is used by more than one billion people and 80 million merchants. Alipay also plans to use algorithms to detect so-called abnormal transactions, 
flag them, and restrict certain accounts from receiving money. I see no potential for abuse there. Alipay also said merchants using cryptocurrencies will be blacklisted and banished from the platform. Now, this is hardly the Chinese Communist Party's first crackdown on crypto. Several years ago, China imposed bans on domestic cryptocurrency exchanges and digital currency fundraisings known as initial coin offerings. And according to Forbes, the cryptocurrency market has still not recovered from when China announced its intensifying regulatory crackdown on cryptocurrencies in mid-May. The market's total value, now around $1.4 trillion, is around 56% of what it was just over a month ago. In other words, it's dropped by nearly half. But as I said, there's a silver lining to all this. As the Global Times says, as a result of this ban, Chinese miners must form alliances to migrate overseas, to places such as North America and Russia. In the long run, getting the majority of Bitcoin mining out of China and out from under the thumb of the Chinese Communist Party is good. It means that the party won't ever be able to manipulate Bitcoin transactions by controlling more than half of the mining power. And that protects everyone who invests in Bitcoin. And this episode is sponsored by PC Doctor Toolbox. Computer and software crashes, hardware failures, and general computer slowdowns are way too common. And they can come up during the worst times, like during a business meeting or when you're traveling away from home and your trusted IT person isn't around. So if you're concerned about the health of your computer, and want tools to prevent untimely system issues, you should be using PC Doctor Toolbox. Stop crashes before they happen. And we have a special 50% off discount just for China Uncensored viewers. Use the link and coupon code below to take advantage of this limited time offer. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching China Uncensored.